KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. All new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, one man is dead after being hit by a car in Harmon early Friday. Plus, the man accused of threatening to go on a shooting rampage after calling it in to 911 appears in court. And oral arguments are heard in the appeal of the now more than $15 million arbitration award owed by the port to the YTK Corporation. Hoffa and good evening. A man is dead after being hit by a car in Harmon early Friday morning. Images from the scene showed the damage to the car involved. It happened along Route 16 in Harmon near Napa Auto Parts just after 1 a.m. Police say the driver of the silver Toyota Prius was on the inner northbound lane when the accident occurred. The victim was rushed to GRMC but didn't survive. His name has not yet been released. GPD's Highway Patrol is investigating whether speed, alcohol or drugs are possible factors in the crash. This marks the ninth auto pedestrian deadly crash so far this year. An autopsy is scheduled for Monday afternoon. The driver charged in a separate auto pedestrian fatality from earlier this month, meanwhile, has been released. Edwin Bido was arrested after he allegedly hit a woman crossing the street near American Grocery in Dededo. He was charged with driving while under the influence of alcohol with injuries as a third-degree felony and driving while under the influence of alcohol as a misdemeanor. The accident, as we reported, killed Melinda Sue Duenas. No indictment was ever handed down. We now have more details on that shooting threat from earlier this week. Although John Anthony Campos Ogo was arrested late Wednesday, the same day he allegedly phoned 911 with the shooting threat, he made his first court appearance late this afternoon. Apparently, court documents state this wasn't his first time to call emergency responders. Here's more. It was caller ID that helped investigators crack this case, and when they located the suspect, he was found buck naked in a makeshift tin home in Dededo. 56-year-old John Anthony Camposogo is believed to be the man who put Island residents in a scare all Wednesday. This after he allegedly phoned in a threat to 911, stating, quote, The emergency is up his expletive and that we need to send someone here now because he is going to start shooting people, end quote. That's when he allegedly hung up, not giving specifics in his threat and putting authorities island-wide on guard. Alerts were also sent to residents to stay vigilant. In court today, Prosecutor Basil O'Malley recommended Ogo be kept in jail on $5,000 cash bail. Due to the nature of the charges, uh, it's considered a danger to the community, caused panic and island-wide and concerned island-wide. Uh, Cause a great disruption. Court documents state the dispatcher tried to call the number back, but no luck. The number was registered with GTA and traced to Ogo. When interviewed by police, he said he's called 911 in the past about his neighbor's dogs chasing him, but no one ever responded to his calls for help. When asked about Wednesday's shooting threat, he admitted it was him, that he was angry and said he was going to shoot people but didn't really mean it. Ogo is charged with terrorizing and false alarms, both accompanied by a special allegation for crimes against the community. Bail was set at $5,000 cash. He apologized to the court after previously being caught with the drug spice. Now a local businessman finds himself in trouble yet again, accused of trying to smuggle the same illegal substance into the island. He apparently didn't learn his lesson the first time. A man convicted in federal court for spice is back in jail again. 60-year-old Max Monkey On appeared in local court late Friday afternoon. According to court documents, it was on June 5th. A drug detector dog alerted customs officers to a package addressed to an individual by the name of Jack Cruz at Max's Smoke Shop or Gallup USA in Upper Tumon. Inside, authorities found several drug testing kits, glass pipes, and two foil packages containing 317 gross grams of a leafy substance believed to be synthetic marijuana, better known by its street name, Spice. 
Court documents state the suspect package also contained 11 vials in commercial packaging labeled THC. The feds intercepted the package, replaced the items with sham, and sprayed clue spray before conducting a controlled delivery. Though on signed off on the package, saying it was for his employee, he was caught opening the box, clue spray evidently on his hands. Court documents state more suspected spice, digital scales, and plastic baggies were recovered from the shop. Prosecutor Basil O'Malley advised the court that On is a repeat offender and recommended he be kept in jail on $10,000 cash bail. His attorney, Gloria Rudolph, however, asked that bail amount be lowered. Well, he's viewed to be a danger to the community, importing drugs and paraphernalia to the island. Um, also bring to the court's attention, this is a repeat offense for Mr. On. Uh, he pleaded guilty in uh, United States District Court. He's been a full-time businessman in Ottawa for 20 years, and uh, at this time he is um, self-employed. The only source of income that he has is his business, which he runs by himself. So if he um, were uh, detained, um, that source of income would pretty much um, evaporate. Um, he also um, has been a, a private uh, golf uh, instructor. He's been doing that for the past five years, and at present he has um, three students. Bail was set at $10,000 cash. KUAM file show Ant's federal conviction resulted in no jail time, only five years probation, with the first year to be spent in home detention. During his sentencing last year, he begged for mercy, stating, quote, I didn't know it was going to be this much trouble. When I purchased it, it was legal, but all of a sudden, it became illegal, end quote. KUAM files show that a 16-year-old girl passed out after purchasing spice from On. The teen had her adult sibling purchase spice from one of his two storefronts, and she was hospitalized. Fortunately, she made a full recovery with no long-term damage. His next court hearing in the local court is scheduled for June 25th. The Guam Supreme Court heard oral arguments today in the appeal of the now more than $15 million arbitration award owed by the port to YTK Corporation. The case involves a lease for Hotel Wharf, signed by the parties almost two decades ago. Nestor Laconta reports. The case dates back to 2006, when the port and YTK signed a series of five-year leases totaling 45 years for a fisheries operation that never really got started. An ensuing dispute wound up before an arbitration panel, which decided YTK's multi-million dollar award. It was upheld by the Superior Court, but appealed by the port to the Supreme Court. Attorney Kathleen Fisher represents YTK. So I think the court had a lot of questions uh, about really the port's argument that the um, uh, lease was illegal and why the arbitrators decided that differently. And uh, they also had some question about the damages that were awarded that both of us were answering for the court. So I, I think it was a court that had a lot of, you know, interesting questions that posed challenges to both sides. Attorney Michael Phillips is counsel for the port. The real uh, contest seems to be over um, arbitration. And the question is, well, even if they're completely wrong, I think most people looking at it, um, in fairness, will concede that, uh, that they were wrong. Does the uh, Supreme Court in this case have the authority uh, to step in and say, we're going to overturn your decision? And uh, I think uh, that's where a lot of the heartache is. And then there is the overarching question of sovereign immunity and the legislature's requirement to approve any lease of more than five years. The legislature has to consent um, when somebody sues them for land or in this case on a contract. And uh, the legislature has not allowed the port to lease property for any more than five years. And uh, usually in government, if you don't have the authority to act, then you can't act. In this case, it's not uh, just a lack of authority, but specific mandates from the Guam legislature that say that uh, any leases, any uh, conveyances of land need to go before the legislature. Sovereign immunity is a very complicated issue, and the port did raise uh, that. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, as and the court raised it as a question about whether, you know, any instrumentality of the government of Guam, you know, is immune from this particular type of award, 
and uh, there are a lot of questions that the court was asking and that I was answering and Mr. Phillips was answering about whether that's different in the context of arbitration and whether the arbitrators get to decide that first or the court gets to decide it. You know, and that's just, uh, you know, that's what the court process is about is the court ultimately will determine that. The question of whether or not uh, the Supreme Court can review that or should review that um, you know, as you mentioned, is 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 key. Um, I said it uh, in in one uh, statement, and I think it summarizes it. They can look the other way. They have the authority to look the other way. I think the law demands that they don't. A panel of arbitrators spent a lot of time figuring out, you know, how to award actually the least amount that they could under the lease, and that once this is over and an amount of damages, uh, you know, for really the ports walking away, you know, from its obligations is finished, then uh, the port can move on and develop Hotel Wharf, which is a fabulous, valuable property here on Guam. I just wish Guam YTK had been able to participate in that. The High Court has taken the matter under advisement. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lecanto. A special investigating committee will begin its review of the Guam Memorial Hospital. Senators passed a resolution authored by Senator Dennis Rodriguez Jr. Thursday night establishing the committee. As reported, the hospital has been scrutinized for a slew of issues and most recently accused by former staff for multiple failures on management's part. GMH leaders have since disputed the allegations made against them. The hospital is also awaiting a response from the Joint Commission on Accreditation regarding its proposed corrective action plan. The Legislative Investigating Committee includes Senators Rodriguez, Mary Torres, Joseph St. Augustine, Mike St. Nicholas, and Fernando Estevez. Now the committee could also investigate the allegations of corruption at the Chamorro Land Trust Commission and the Guam Police Department if proposed amendments to the resolution are approved. The committee is set to hold its first meeting within the next two weeks. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder. And to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy. To the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. As a nurse, I cared for thousands of patients at their time of greatest need. I know how important it is to have our only public hospital accredited. With your help, Josh and I will change our island's approach to healthcare. We will reduce insurance costs, make sure there are enough beds at GMH, better utilize public health centers, and invest in the latest technology. We will get the job done. I'm in to help get us there, and I humbly ask for your vote. I'm and I approve this message. It's a celebration at Cars Plus and Mighty. And during our Jeep celebration event, you'll save thousands on every new Jeep in stock, like a new 2018 Compass. Save up to $3,750. Or save up to $4,000 on a new 2018 Cherokee. How about a new Renegade? Save up to six grand. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Hurry in for our Jeep celebration event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. 
There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Not accredited yet, but still approved. In a three to one vote majority rule at the special charter school council meeting where they renew Guahan Academy Charter School, the charter school councilwoman and one council member running for senator, a current lawmaker questions if that decision was legal. Carmen Terlahi reports. The vote was a yes to renew Guahan Academy Charter School with three members voting in favor and one opposed including a candidate for Senator Selba Balta, who voted yes to renewal, despite the fact that Gax was unable to meet requirements by law that says any charter school needs to be accredited within five years. Some of the takeaways, uh, Madam Chair, that I got out of that public hearing uh, really uh, were, were concrete information that, um, that really uh, touched me very personally. I'm really torn between the law and, and the successes of, uh, of the Guan Academy Charter School students. Education Oversight Chair Senator Joseph Augustine surprised with the council's decision. Most of the charter school council folks were not in support of any renewal or anything because they were following the law. So how did they renew it? I don't know. Well, you know what? Um, if they think that was their best, their best step forward by renewing something that is against the law, if you're going to be a lawmaker, you, Try to follow the law. It's a renewal with stipulations, says Babauta, who is now heading the committee to address GAC's accreditation, telling KUAM that Senator St. Augustine hasn't supported charter schools, basing his decision for renewal on Dr. Velma Sablon's study of students at GAC's that he says proved their success compared to traditional public schools. Senator St. Augustine responds. I don't want to close any school. And I honestly believe the students have... have um, are getting educated, they're being taught, but it becomes a management issue. Do you think it is reasonable to ask for the charter school to be accredited within five years? Yes, as a matter of fact, I, I, I've spoken to, you know, you know, other DOE schools have gone through that process. Sometimes in the, uh, well, well, let's use ILEARN for example. In the three years, they got their accreditation. So it is possible. Senator St. Augustine is sending a letter to the Attorney General requesting for a legal review. Chairwoman Amanda Bloss, who is also running for Senator, says the council respects his decision. Bloss did not partake in the vote, though she notes her reservations that the vote did not fully comply with charter school law. Reporting for Guamzi's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Chulahi. The Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges commends GCC on a job well done, reaffirming accreditation for seven years. GCC was recognized for exemplary performance in assessing student learning, being the only GovGuam agency designated low risk for 16 consecutive years, innovative initiatives that improve college success, and the president's leadership to pursue grants and build the first LEED Gold Certified Building. Here's President Dr. Mary Okada. GCC's robust fiscal planning and astute fiscal management has allowed it to maintain student tuition and fees at the same level since the fall of 2011, a key component to student access and ultimately student success. In fact, WAS gave no other recommendations for improving GCC. The midterm report won't be due until March 2022, and the next comprehensive review during the spring term of 2025. The last candidate to visit UOG travels to Guam from Montana. Chosen after a controversial candidate steps out of the race, Dr. Ronald Larson shares his ideas with UOG stakeholders. Here's more. The search for the next UOG president is nearing an end. Dr. Ron Larson is the last of four candidates to visit the Mingilao campus, currently the vice provost at Montana State University in Bozeman. They tend to describe me as a calming influence and as a listener. And um, so you're not going to get drama, uh, but I do not want to see status quo. I want to see movement towards a goal. 
He believes in gradual change, a main issue in his view guaranteeing funding for the university. I think the uh, university's challenge is going to be to bring all possibilities to bear. So one is to work very closely with the legislature and the governor and try to um, sustain the funding that is already coming, making sure it actually arrives. Um, but also look at all other sources. Like some of the other candidates, it's his first time to visit Guam but he says he has the desire to fill the criteria that the next UOG president should have substantial knowledge of Guam's culture and people. My own personal experience is that I, I have a real desire to know about other cultures than my own, and my experience has been with Native American cultures in Montana, but um, I'm actually kind of looking forward to the opportunity to, to learn a lot about the Chamorro culture adding that UOG is a unique university in its role to develop Guam, sharing his vision. My vision for the university is not particularly relevant. It's finding out what the shared vision is um, of the faculty and the staff and the students and the nation of Guam. Now that all four have made their visit to UOG, the board will be making a decision in the near future. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Salome Vuki. The deadline of file war claims is only five days away. So far, Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio's office says more than 2,000 Chamorros have filed. You can file if you are a survivor who lived during World War II, a family member, spouse, child, or a parent of someone killed in the war, or your family member survived the war and passed away recently after the law was passed in December 2016. The Congresswoman's office is open to help the island's Manumku fill out that application form. All applications should be posted stamped by Wednesday, June 20th. Let the fun and games begin. The Liberation Festival is looking for vendors. Festivities begin July 11th and will continue through the 22nd at the Paseo and the Guam Museum. Food trucks, art, games and other vendors are welcome. Deadlines for applications are June 25th by 5 p.m. You can also pick up an application at GVB, the Department of Parks and Recreation or go online. Sports is next but first, here's your island weather. Super Sale Event. Enjoy huge savings on our most popular Samsung Galaxy smartphones. But this offer won't last long. So drop into a GTA store today. Every day a plus. We're celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Mats and Management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life.
KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. It's Friday, so let's roll on over to Di Rentanone in Mangilao for your Athlete of the Week. Check it out. We're here at Dot Rent's own for our Athlete of the Week. Today we have soccer standout Cami Pereira. Paul? Cami, congratulations on behalf of uh, Dial Renton. Uh, who would you like to donate this check to? Uh, today I'll be donating the check to Tegan's Breath. It's, um, you know, families who need to get their babies off island. Um, two years ago, my baby godbrother passed away, so that's why I'm donating this check today. Okay, you were born on Guam, uh, raised stateside. How did you get introduced to this sport of soccer? Um, you know, my parents put me in all the sports when I was younger, um, and soccer is just the one I wanted to stick with. It was my favorite. It was the one I had most fun. And you've been pretty active playing soccer overseas. So far, I've played in Italy, Germany, Korea, and the U.S. And what's the style of soccer out there? Is it more technical, physical? Definitely more technical, less physical, less focus on, um, you know, fitness and having more strength than the opposing team. You know, they're really focused on sticking to their style, um, how they want to play, um, and playing the game that way, win or lose. Um, and so that's what they're focused on. I know academics has uh, been something that uh, you've really focused on uh, besides uh, the sports side. For sure, um, that's what's I'm basing my whole college experience on. I'm going for academics rather than for athletics. I got a bunch of offers from D1 and D2 schools, but in the end, I was like, where do I want to go to school? Where do I want to study? So I will be going to Nova Southeastern University in Florida to study exercise science. Um, I may have an opportunity in the future to play D2 soccer, but um, I chose this school for my academics. What were some of the ultimate uh, deciding factors to you going to school out there in uh, Florida? Definitely the programs for what I wanted to study. I did a lot of research into physical therapy, which is what I want to go into after school. Um, and, you know, Nova Southeastern just had the best program for me. Uh, I was able to get into the honors program academically. Um, and so that was a huge part. I got a huge scholarship for that. Um, but, yeah, school was definitely the driving force to my decision. A bunch of places I got offers from they didn't even have the program I wanted to study, and I would have to kind of, you know, navigate my way of what, what to major in in order to get to the field I wanted to, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have a direct path in, into the profession I wanted to go into, so I chose Nova Southeastern for that reason. And has maybe representing Guam on the women's national team uh, something that has crossed your mind? It definitely has. Um, in the past, I've tried to just keep all my options open, and that's why I haven't gone U.S. or Guam specifically. I just, I'm just i here to have fun. I'm here to train, play hard, um, and I just haven't made a decision yet. But it's definitely something I'm open to in the future, uh, something I look forward to. All right, congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dot Rentone Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by... Brogan Walker Sanchez will be stepping into the cage again for Invicta FC on July 21st. Brogan 5-0 in mixed martial arts holds a brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She takes on Miranda Maverick 3-0 as a pro, 6-1 as an amateur. Brogan's last fight in Invicta 27 was a decision win over Sherry Maraski. Miranda Maverick's last win was back in Invicta 24 via unanimous decision over Gabby Romero. Sanchez previously beat Romero back in PXC 49 three years ago. Keep it locked to KUAM Sports as we keep you posted on Brogan's upcoming fight. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Where will your sip take you? You're going to need more than an oil change. Okay. Okay. Try our new slushies at McDonald's. Tropic Twist, Blue Raspberry, and Cherry Limey. Perfect for summer for a limited time. Introducing the Alpha Plus app. With the rewards feature, you can earn points and get free rewards. Filing insurance claims gets no easier as you can receive feedback within 24 hours. 
easily check your insurance balance and insurance policy with the My Policy feature. So download the all new Alpha Plus app on Google Play or the App Store. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. Beat the increase at Triple J. Buy now before the sales tax starts. Zero down, 1.9% financing, and easy trade-in. Now is the time to buy. Get into a 2018 Mazda CX-5 at our lowest price yet, only $19,995. Or our big boy truck, the Ford F-150, starting at $298 per paycheck. Or the North American Car of the Year, the 2018 Honda Accord, at only $206 per paycheck. Beat the increase and buy now at Triple J. Visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and get pre-approved instantly. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy 10th birthday, Malachi Jerome, with lots of love from Mommy, Daddy, Sister Ella, Brothers Marcus and Matthias, Great Grandma Lulang, and the Familia. Happy 22nd birthday, Anthony Brub, or AJ Brub. We love you always, love your family. Happy birthday to you, Alex Timinglo. And turning 7 today, happy birthday, Kanoa Bloss, to our Pokemon master. We choose you. Have a great one. Love your family. And now it's time to announce the winner of our Cold Stone Creamy Birthday Club winner for the week. I think I was repetitive when I said that. Congratulations and happy birthday to Alex Timinglow. A representative from Cold Stone will contact you on how to redeem your yummy Cold Stone birthday cake. And don't forget to share. <laughs> That's it for tonight. Good night. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Hafade and hello everybody, Jason Silas here and tonight we are going to give you your first look at this year's Guam barbecue block party, cannot wait for that. We're also going to bring in Dr. Arthur Jackson about his biography on his beloved grandfather. 